Why are you running against Dave Obi? Well, in regard to the immigration situation, I started to get more nationally than local in my um, concerns. I started to realize that we have a major problem in Washington, and that is there's a partisanship there that is just destroying our country. Everything is based on which party supports it or which party doesn't support it. Mr. Obi and head of appropriations has learned the technique, if he wasn't born with it, I'm not sure, but learned the te- to technique of forcing people to comply to his wishes through bullying. And I don't believe that's the way for Congress to work. I think this feuding, this, this kindergarten aspect where everybody fights is wrong. We need to start working together. Like I said earlier, there is no issue that is one party or another party issue. It's something that we have to come together. It's one thing when you're in a campaign to deal with your political philosophy. But when you go to work, you need to get the job done. Can you imagine what a company, you mentioned earlier about how business is run. Can you imagine a business being run the way we are running Congress, where you have a party line on which side of the line aisle are you? Well, there have been uh, issues in partisanship in America ever since the founding of this republic. George Name one. Wa- Give me one issue that's partisanship that doesn't exist on both sides of that line. One issue that where the actual where you can't find immigration is an issue. Democrats the Iraq and Republicans war, are opposed to the it. The Iraq War is an issue. People on both sides, both parties, both believe have different views on that. Most of the people who support the Iraq War are Republicans. Most of the people who oppose it are Democrats. There are people on the Republicans that don't, and there are Democrats that do. See, that's where the problem comes, is because Congress separates the issue, we think that the people that put them in do, and that's wrong. There's, you know, We have to get past that. We have to get to the point, yes, you can have your opinion on where you stand, and that can be a political issue, but what get the a, job done. What about the economy? There are people who um, uh, favor a stronger role for the government in the economy. There are people who favor a more laissez-faire, hands-off role. Uh, some would say Democrats favor a stronger role for the govern- government, and Republicans are, are more hands-off. I would tend to say, well, there, there may be a tendency there, but I would tend to say any businessman would like more of a hands-off and any government official would like more of a hands-on and then we get to vote for which one we want. And hasn't uh, can't the argument be made that much of the current mess that we're in right now is because the government has taken a hands-off and approach and hasn't regulated some of the financial markets like it should have regulated them? Yes and no. I would tend to say that it's a tendency where they tend to regulate where they shouldn't and they don't regulate where they should. <laughs> we have a situation with labor. Look at the labor industry right now. There was a time when the unions came in to protect the worker. Then government put laws in place that pretty much took the job of the labor unions. Now, what do we have? We're right back to where we started from. Where, where do you stand on labor unions as a businessman? Are you uh, pro-labor, anti-labor? Are you in favor of the right to unionize? Are you in favor of right-to-work laws? I'm an American. And I believe that this country has to work together. There are good and there are bad in all aspects of every one of those issues you brought up as far as labor versus, you know, non-union. The point is when we start to let our position be so prejudiced that we lose track of the other person's position, we are in trouble. If labor unions are working together to protect the country, great. If they're fighting the employer, we have a problem. Daniel Milkey is a Republican running for Congress against Dave Obey. Our lines are open for your comments and questions at 1-800-780-9742. That's 1-800-780-9742. I'm Glenn Moberg. This is Route 51 Regional Talk Radio. We'll be back after this. We're back on Route 51 Regional Talk Radio on the Ideas Network with Congressional Candidate Daniel Milkey. If you've just joined us, he is a sustainable farmer in Portage County running for Congress as a Republican against longtime incumbent Dave Obey. I'm Glenn Moberg. We want to uh, especially welcome those of you who are joining us for the first time on KUWS in Superior. Wherever you are listening to us this afternoon, if you've got questions about Mr. Milkey and his race for Congress, if you have uh, questions about Dave Obey's long tenure, if you're a Dave Obey supporter, a Dave Obey opponent, 
or uh, someone who just has questions about the top issues that are facing our economy and our, our nation in foreign policy, well, this is your program, 1-800-780-9742, 1-800-780-9742. Regardless of where you're calling from, if you're in the Wausau area, 2616371, 2616371. Dan, I want to um, uh, move to um, uh, some foreign policy questions right now, and what I'm going to do is play uh, uh, a brief clip from uh, the incumbent uh, Congressman Dave Obey, uh and his position on the Iraq war. This was recorded uh, several weeks ago. I think we need to understand this war was won militarily years ago. It was lost politically by two groups of people, by the Iraqi government that refused to make the political compromises necessary among Iraqis in order to bring peace to that country, and by uh, th- these foolish romanticists, uh, these neocon romanticists in the White House from Vice President Cheney on down, who believed naively that we could uh, impose democracy through the barrel of a gun in a region that has never had any tradition of democracy. We're, it's going to take a generation for us to dig out uh, in terms of world opinion from, from what we did to ourselves by attacking Iraq. And if we do, do it to Iran, I think the world is going to say we're nuts. Dave Obey has called the Iraq War one of the worst foreign policy disasters in the history of the country. He says we were naive to try to impose democracy at the barrel of a gun. Uh, Dan Milkey, your opinion. Well, first of all, keep in mind, I do not have the information that was given to Congress when they made the decision that they made in regards to this war, the decisions that the president made. I don't have that data. So for me to go ahead and say what was the right thing or what was the wrong thing to be done at that time would be speaking without knowledge. However, uh, he said it'll take quite a few years to dig out. The way Congress moves, it'll probably take a couple more times that before it'll happen. Uh, we have a problem, and the problem is whether it be war, whether it be the economy, whether it be health care, whether it be immigration, whatever it will be, the problem is we have a Congress that uses these things as political battering rams back and forth while our children are over there giving their lives for what they've been sent to do. And if Congress has a choice and the president has a choice, if they feel that we need a war and they make that choice, it's made then we need to support those troops. If they decide that that war should not be there, then they need to bring them home. What I have a real problem with is when people like Dave Obey and others decide that they're going to use my children as a pawn in forcing a war to end or to continue. And that's when I get upset. When you're aiding and abetting the enemy by cutting funding to troops, I consider that treason. And that's where I have, and that's strong words, but treason is when you aid and abet the enemy. And if you take away the ability for the soldiers to protect themselves, then you're doing that. Bring them home if you don't want to, but don't you mess with the funding that goes for those soldiers. The only power Congress has is the power over the purse strings, the power over funding. They supposedly have the power to declare war, but in reality, they haven't used that power since the Second World War. Uh, People who have criticized Congress for doing nothing to end the war say that the only practical way to do that is to stop the funding. And if we do stop the funding, we'll find a way to get those troops home without putting them in harm's way. You know, if they'd work a little better together and would cooperate, I think we could find better solutions than that. My son is entering the military in May. He's in an area that's supposed to go there this fall. We'll be breaking down doors in Baghdad. I don't want my son to get shot. I don't want my children to die. War is a is an evil that nobody should want. However, when it's in place and when they're sent, right or wrong, you don't let them pay the price. Dan Milky, we did it in if, Vietnam, and now we're doing it here. We're playing politics when we shouldn't be playing politics.